Hey everybody, I'm Dave Horton, the creator of Jambones. Jambones is the open source CPaaS for service providers. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to run Jambones on a Kubernetes cluster. And what better way to show you than to walk through it. So let's go through an example from soup to nuts of building up a Jambones cluster on Kubernetes in Google Cloud. Without further ado, then let's get to it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster. I'm logged into Google Cloud, and this is where I'm going to create my cluster. Go ahead and click Create. I'm going to choose Standard Cluster. Now, there are a couple changes that we need to make in order to run SIP and RTP traffic in Kubernetes. For those of you familiar with trying to do this, you're probably aware of the challenges. For those that aren't, it basically stems from the fact that there are no good ingress controllers or really load balancers at this point in time to properly handle SIP and RTP traffic in Kubernetes. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a special node pool that will have host networking on and we're going to run our SIP and RTP front end traffic there. So I'm speaking about if you're familiar with Jambones there's an SBC function and a feature server function the SBC function is the, is the part that faces the network, and within there we do some SIP processing, SIP signaling processing, and some RTP media processing. Those are going to go in a special node pool that we'll create, and they'll have host networking on. In fact, I recommend for a production cluster that we create two special node pools, one for SIP and one for RTP. You don't need to do that. But the reason I recommend it for production is that the RTP processing will typically need to scale sooner and scale more than the SIP signaling processing. So if you've got them both in the same node pool and you have auto scaling on, then as you're scaling the RTP nodes, you'll also be scaling SIP nodes. Now the problem with that is you probably, in many cases, we need to go out and publish those SIP addresses to our carriers, our SIP trunking providers. So we really don't want those SIP addresses coming and going a lot, or we will be faced with going back to the providers and updating our addresses. It may be if you're not working with providers like that, you don't have that challenge, but again, many of us do. So for that reason, I recommend a special node pool for the SIP, and it won't need to auto scale. This, it's very, the, the efficient Dractio server is processing the SIP and it's quite efficient. So probably two nodes in your SIP node pool for redundancy. And then you'll have a separate node pool for RTP that will scale in and scale out. And of course, you'll have a default node pool where everything else is going to run, including the feature server, all the services, the database, etc. Okay, so sorry to hit you with that little complication right up front. But let's go ahead and do it. So I've got a basic cluster here. I'm going to just change the name of the cluster to Jambones. I'm going to leave everything else the same. I've got one node pool, but as I just said, I'm going to add two special node pools. My default node pool, I really don't need to change much. It's got three nodes. It doesn't have auto scaling on. I could turn auto scaling on. Typically, I would. I'm just going to put it on one node and turn auto scaling on. The one node really is just so I save a little money here on this, this test cluster, but you may start with a larger number of nodes. But if you're building something initially for testing, one, one node for the default pool is fine. Okay, let's go to our second pool. This one I'm going to put SIP in, so I'm going to have the SIP signaling processing in here. Again, if it was production, I'd probably say two nodes, two, and there'll be two IP addresses. I'm just going to put one node because I want to save a little money. I'm going to not turn auto scaling on. Now I'm going to need to do, let's go to the node part, we'll do a couple different things. The default machine type is uh, two virtual CPU, four gig of memory, and that's good. Down here, again, we have host networking on, and we need to allow some traffic in. And since we're not using an ingress controller, again, can't use an ingress controller for SIP, um, we need to explicitly allow this traffic in. So on GCP, you have network tags that you can do that, and I've set up network tags to allow SIP. So that's UDP and TCP into 5060. I'm also going to allow uh, SMPP because that's part of Jambones, and that is traffic, TCP traffic into 275. So again, all I've done is create a special node pool that my SIP SBC session border controller signaling is going to run in. I've allowed uh, the traffic in that I need. Now, metadata, the last thing I need to do, I need to add a Kubernetes label and a taint. This is what's going to force 
the, the SIP traffic, the SIP processing elements, the SIP pods, the daemon sets actually in Kubernetes to run on in this node pool and only in this node pool and prevent other things from running in this node pool. So I'm going to create a label. It's going to have, it's going to be called VoIP environment with a value of SIP. And I'm going to add a taint. The key for the taint is SIP and it's got a value of true. I'll come back to describing how this matches up to the Kubernetes stuff later, but this is what I need to do for now. Let's go to the second or the second special pool, and as you can guess, that's going to have RTP. This one you typically would want auto scaling on. Again, I'm trying to save money, so I'm just going to say let's start with one node for right now. Again, I need to allow the RTP traffic in, and that is RTP by default in Jambones ports 40,000 through 60,000, and I've set up a uh, firewall rule for that as well. And again, a Kubernetes label and taint. VoIP environment as before is the key, but now the value is RTP, and my taint is RTP with a value of true. Now we're good. Let's go ahead and create the cluster. So that's going to take a, a few minutes to do. While we're doing that, let's go look at the Helm charts that we're going to be running. They are checked in, um, as you can see here, under the Jambonge project, Helm-Charts. And there's actually a README, which covers most of what we're going to cover in this video today. So it's a good place to go if you've got questions afterwards. And it shows you, for those not familiar with Helm, it's an environment that allows you to easily install Kubernetes um, applications. Um, and this is a Helm chart for Jambones that we're, we're going to run. In the README, we talk about what I've just talked about here, the, the reason for the special uh, node pools, and shows you how to set them up as before. There's a main Helm chart, and then I've broken the database and the monitoring out into their own subcharts. So from the standpoint of Kubernetes, you can think of three sort of pieces of functionality. You've got the core Jambone stuff, the core call processing, SMPP processing. It needs access to a database, MySQL, and also Redis. I put that in a subchart, and it could go in its own namespace as well. That's up to you. It's an option. Uh, and the monitoring as well. So for the monitoring piece, there's a Grafana dashboard, there's an InfluxDB time series database, and there's Homer. All of that, again, is in a subchart, and if you like, all of that can be installed in its own uh, namespace. The reason for that is that as you deploy a distributed uh, environment, you may want multiple call processing clusters distributed around, but probably only one monitoring um, system to monitor all of them. Possibly one centralized database as well. So this kind of gives you that option. Uh, and then it, the README talks about installing the chart. Um, and there are some variables that do need to be set to specify whether you want to accept the default namespaces, as, which will put the database in its own namespace called DB and the monitoring in its own namespace, or you can change that if you want. And then also there are some ingress controllers that are created and some public URLs for things like the portal, the API, the Grafana dashboard, and Homer, and you specify those as well. Okay, let's go back to see how our little cluster is proceeding. Okay, our cluster is up and running, so first thing, let's go ahead and connect to it. Okay, we paste that there. Enter. Now I like to use Lens to, and we can see in Lens now that I've connected to it, it's a new cluster, we can look at it, and we've got a basic vanilla cluster running Look at the namespaces. We've got sort of the common namespaces, nothing more. Okay, so now we're going to install our Jambones sys application into it. What we're going to do, let me um, just copy the command here and then describe it. So we're doing helm install. We're going to ask helm to generate a release name for us. The namespace is going to be Jambones, and we're asking it to create the namespace, and then we're setting some variables. So global.db.namespace is db and global.monitoring.namespace is monitoring. So we are going to create two namespaces, one for the three namespaces, one namespace for the db database components that will have MySQL and Redis, 
one for the monitoring components, and then a main namespace called Dambones, which will have everything else. Then you can see we're also assigning some host names for our ingress controllers. We've got grafana.kas-gcp.jambones.org, Homer, same subdomain. The web app is going to be just kas-gcp.jambones.org and the API host name. These are required, so it won't run unless you do set some DNS names. And then we're setting the cloud it equals GCP. So there are some changes for GCP versus AWS, etc. And then uh, I'm just, since I'm in the checked out folder of the Helm charts, I'm just doing Don. So now we go ahead and run that and we'll spin up our Jambones components. Okay, so we can see we've created a Helm chart. And we can run this command to get some status on it. And furthermore, if we go in back into Lens, we can see a couple things happening. One, I've got a monitoring namespace, I've got a DB namespace, I've got a Jambones namespace. Now this cluster will take about five minutes or so to come up the first time, and that's mainly because if we, let's go look at our pods and let's go look in the DB namespace. We see we've got MySQL, we've got uh, Redis, and we've got a job that's gonna seed the database. So it does take a while for MySQL specifically to come up and get seeded. And we'll see that a lot of the other components, a lot of the other pods are waiting for the first time for MySQL to come up. So we go into the monitoring namespace, we'll see that a bunch of them are all sort of ready, but they're waiting for the database to come up. And if we go to Jambones, similar, a bunch of components, not many of them are running yet because they're all waiting for the database to come up and get seeded. So this will take a few minutes. Let's go get a cup of coffee and come back in five. Okay. We're back and everything is up and running. We can see the database, MySQL is up and Redis. The uh, DB create container has run and seeded the database. If we go look in the monitoring namespace, we can see everything is up. And also in Jambones, again, everything is green. So the next thing we wanna do is get the IP addresses that were assigned for our um, ingress controllers, so we can say minus njambones ingress. So in the Jambones namespace, we have two ingress controllers, one called web app and one called API server. The web app is the Jambones portal. The API is the REST API. We also, if we look in the monitoring namespace, have got a few ingress controllers created one for the Grafana dashboard and one for Homer. So next step is to configure these in our DNS um, provider. So let me take the portal IP. Actually, I guess I'll take this first. And we can, I'm using uh, Vercel here. I create DNS records. Oops. So this one is for the portal, that's the subdomain. The value is 86. We'll go ahead and add that. And then we'll also get API subdomain. And we'll get Grafana. We'll get Homer. Oops. And add that. So now I've got DNS records that are pointed to the, the four ingress controllers that were created. Let's go ahead and uh, log into the portal now. And we can see it's up and running. And we'll do our first time provisioning here. We'll get set up to actually make a call. And there it is. So this is my new Jambones cluster running in Kubernetes, and I've got the basic stuff. The default account is created. The two sort of stock applications are there. Let's go ahead and add a carrier. I'm going to add, uh, I've got a Twilio trunk I can point over here, so we'll do that. 
I'm using IP whitelisting, so I don't need that. And my domain, I think, is jambones-gcp, or maybe the other way around. Let me go to Twilio. Yes, jambones-gcp on this trunk. That's what I did, jambones-gcp. Yep, so I can save that. <clears throat> now I bring it up again. I can look here, and where it says have your carriers whitelist, I can get my IP for the cluster. And that's where I want Twilio to send the calls. So on the termination side, um, I've actually got an access list for GM123. So let's go ahead and put that IP address in there. This is basically to whitelist my IP with Twilio so I can send it calls. Uh, let's go back to the trunk that I was looking at. And on the origination side, for it to send me calls, I need to put this here. Again, zip goal in my IP that I just got. And we're good to go. <clears throat> I've got a number associated with this IP, so let's take that and provision that over here. And a phone number. It's from Twilio, default account. Let's just route it to the Hello World application for some basic testing. Let's add a speech credential. Uh, for all accounts, I'll choose the file. Okay, so basically I've just provisioned my new system. I've added a carrier, Twilio, a phone number from Twilio, put in some speech credentials, um, and I'm going to route it to a Hello World application, which already exists. So no need to really change anything unless I wanted to. And I'm good to go. Let's go ahead and test the application and make sure everything's working hunky-dory in my new cluster. Hi there, and welcome to Jambones. Jambones is the CPaaS designed with the needs of communication service providers in mind. This is an example of simple text-to-speech, but there is so much more you can do. Try us out. OK. Everything seems to be up and running, which is great. Uh, I can look at recent calls, and I can see that I've got this call that just showed up. So that's all working. It came in from uh, Twilio. I can also go to um, my Grafana portal, which I think work. And I can see I've got a Grafana portal up and running here. Log in with admin admin the first time and change that password. And if I look at my dashboards, I've got a Jim Bones metrics dashboard in there. And I can see I've already got some data coming in. Number of calls, obviously, just one call. Webhook response times, Google text-to-speech times, so forth and so on. So that's good. And I've got my Homer dashboard as well in this cluster. Admin zip capture by default. And I can see I've got traces from my um, call that I just made. So everything is up and running in the cluster. That's pretty much everything there is to do to get a Jambones up and running in Kubernetes. So there you have it, running Jambones under Kubernetes. Please feel free to check it out. Have a look at the GitHub repo from my Helm charts. Feel free to give me pull requests. And if you have any issues, please hit us up at support at jambones.org. Thanks, that's all for now, and have a great day.